So at the beginning of this year, I did something that I'd always wanted to do, and that was to take a road trip with a friend with the idea in mind of shooting film photography from point A to point B, moving from the city out into the countryside. So over the Labor Day weekend in March of 2023, I employed my good friend Liam, who you may know as Wogblood, and got up at the crack of dawn with an overly packed car with more shit than we could ever need. These are the pharmaceuticals. And with well over $100 in rolls of film and then some in video storage, we began to make our way towards Melbourne. The idea of this trip was we'd spend a day driving from the hustle and bustle of the city out towards a small town in Victoria called Sea Lake, where my family grew up. Along the way, we wanted to capture the transition from that hustle and bustle to the very quiet, modest countryside life and stop at various sites of congregation along the way. The camera I used was a Canon EOS 33 or equivalent model, essentially just a point and shoot film camera, but with all the capabilities and settings of your standard film cameras. We had two lenses to pick from, which we swapped with our video and film camera. Both zoom lenses, one with a standard focal length somewhere between 20 and 90 mil and the other an ultra wide angle lens between 16 and 35. I'll leave all the rolls of film I used in the description. We began our journey in the suburb of Carlton, just north of Melbourne's central business district. And we were there just in time for the first golden hour of the day. Having loaded up the first roll of Cinestill, we began looking around for anything interesting to shoot. And this could have been as simple as the way the light struck the architecture with the harsh morning shadows, or people just getting up on their way to work or to university. They look kind of fucking sick. We walked down to suburban Hogwarts to have a look at its interesting architecture. And we happen to find oh, Jesus. Really As I was trying to get a shot down a narrow corridor with an interesting gate, a student came by and we asked her, oh, excuse me, what is this building? And her answer was incredibly helpful. Um, it's like a college. Ah, okay. Mm. Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> on our way out of Hogwarts, we stopped in a local cafe. We met the lovely employees who were getting ready to fill out everybody's daily coffee prescriptions and had a great breakfast. <laughs> Pushing further in towards the city, we stopped to find more interesting architecture at a small park as well as some cool dogs, including Roger, who had three legs and got grumpy if he had to walk too long and then had to be pushed in a pram. Finally, we ended up in Melbourne's central business district and I switched to black and white film. We made our way around, keeping an eye out for interesting architecture and a battle between the old and new buildings of Melbourne. I stopped on Swanston Street to try and catch a passing cyclist and this guy came in. We watched as the rat race culture awoke and people gathered for their morning coffee like a religion. Oh, it kind of looks nice actually. It does look nice. Stick your balls in. Every so often I'd stop and ask somebody if I could take their photo while they were doing their job, like a barber or a florist. But of course, you're gonna get some people who'll say no and won't be as friendly as that guy on Swanston Street. In my various efforts to capture people in the city, managed to find book versus phone meme and as well as the aforementioned poser another guy taking photos on the same street who I'm pretty sure tried to take one of me when I had my back turned so
That's the end of the roll. Having been satisfied there in finishing the first roll of black and white film, we began our drive out towards Footscray to see another side of congregation, the Heavenly Queen Temple. It was somewhere that I'd always wanted to go and photograph. But first, we had to struggle through the ordeal of trying to find a car park. So we just spent the last like 15 minutes looking for a car park in butt fucking nowhere. All dead end, all full. To find this. I'd since put in a roll of Cinestill 800T, which is a film made for dark tungsten lighting on film sets. And as you may notice, all the shots in colour here have an incredible warm glow. All the sky and all the highlights are very blown out and it looks quite heavenly. Looking around at all the red columns, the Cinestill 800 made everything glow like neon. Either that or it was just this guy achieving nirvana in the courtyard. After that, we began our drive north, still very early in the day and just a few rolls down. With the sun high in the sky, we reached the Calder Park Raceway, our next stop along the way. Another place I dreamed of shooting film in. We looked for a point of entry, parked the car nearby, and began the long hike up the old hills inside. And looking all around us, already it seemed the scenery was beginning to die down, just a few minutes out from the city. We stumble into the track and make our way around the old sun-bleached seats and grandstands making our way around the abandoned buildings to get some interesting shots from indoors. And then onto the track. Already feeling like we were on a grand adventure, we headed back north and continued on our journey. Onto the next side of congregation was a bizarre little find out in the middle of nowhere, a Vietnamese Buddhist commune in rural Victoria. We sheepishly made our way in and walked up to the front door to ask permission if we could take photos in their beautiful garden. We met the owners who didn't speak a lot of English, but seemed happy enough for us to wander around. Hey Mac, yeah. two in the pink, one in the stink, am I right? It's here we took some of my favorite photos with the Sinistil 800 creating this ethereal glow around the Buddha. There. What did you think of that, Max? It's kind of surreal. What is it, like a Buddhist community center? Yeah, Buddhist I commune, guess. they all just live here yeah. together. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Scary guard dog, very well trained. <laughs> Yeah, I should have got video footage of that. It's here I almost had my leg chewed off by Cujo the guard dog. <laughs> oh man. Persisting further out, the countryside is beginning to look more rugged. Our next stop was in Charlton. Didn't take any photos, but we bought some liquor and indulged in some childlike nostalgia. From there, I drive the last hour out to Sea Lake, while Liam played Death Grips where they've never been played before. Finally, sometime in the early evening, we arrive and check into our cabin. We go out, have a drink and a feed, and call it a night. Not before I try to take some night shots in town with the Sinistil 800. Not exactly what I was after, but you can see the way things light up like neon. The next day, I was up at the crack of dawn to try and shoot the beautiful painted silos. I wrote in my notes Walt Whitman quote. The thing with shooting on film, of course, is you're bound to make mistakes. I'd originally brought a digital camera out there just in case I needed to test for aperture and ISO. But I didn't bring a battery for that camera. What I had to do was try and use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and figure out the settings on that. Now the Blackmagic has a much higher ISO range than the Canon camera I was using to shoot on film with. So I did the best I could with what I had and ended up with nothing. Many wasted shots. And the ones that you could see looked like shit. So Sea Lake is very special to me as it's where the majority of my father's side of the family grew up and lived. And to me, it sort of feels like a spiritual second home. We made our way out when the sun had come up to the old farm that my family owned. We had a look around and took some shots of the antiquated farming machinery that had been there for decades, as well as tried to shoot some of the shots of the sheep. 
Now I was using pretty cheap color film here and there's plenty of light leaks, but if you ask me that sort of adds to the aesthetic, which is what we're all here for. Oh shit. <laughs> We said goodbye and made our way up to Lake Tyrrell, the lake for which Sea Lake gets its name. Now Lake Tyrrell is a huge flat salt bed where nothing grows, so in my mind this is the point B, this is the culmination of the hustle and bustle of city life compared to rural Victoria. Although in recent years, Lake Tyrrell had actually become something of a tourist attraction, making it another site of congregation and ironically helping to keep Sea Lake and the Mallee region alive. Running low on film, we made one last stop to another place I wanted to visit, the nearby town of Nandaley, which I'd heard had some nice churches and abandoned spots around. Got my, my glasses on as a yellow filter because I couldn't afford one. <laughs> well, I could have, I just couldn't be fucked. That's fair. It's very bleak. Yeah, not too many people living here. Eventually all these towns just sort of combine into one. We shot around the local abandoned sports club and some buildings nearby. I got some great shots of this weatherboard church there, which of course came with a crooked cross on top. We shot around town in black and white while several of the local townsfolk looked on confused at a distance. Just as we were coming back, two older looking folk at the edge of town beckoned us over. And we thought we were about to be shot or chased out of town. But we sat down with them on a scorching hot day. 
and they offered me what my heart was yearning for the whole time, a beer. So, depending on the kindness of strangers, we sat and had a chat with these two older gentlemen. They asked what we were doing and why we were going around town. I mentioned that my family had grown up in Seat Lake, and one of the gentlemen inquired further, and what do you know, he would happen to be my father's cousin. But nonetheless, with no film left and not much else to do, we decided to come home early. We left satisfied and enlightened, having visited my spiritual home in my country with, oddly enough, my people. It was never my intention to portray this regional area in such a sad, negative way, but that is the unfortunate truth that these small towns are dying as the younger populations move out towards more populated areas for work and to start their lives. But ironically, despite how quiet it is, it is where I felt the most life on this whole journey. We came home having taken roughly 180 shots on film, maybe 130 of which were good. All that was left to do was to send the rolls off to be developed and maybe get half of them back if we were lucky. We both had an amazing time and I can't wait to do it again.